Okay, so uh, I did say I would uh, take you with me on this adventure of making these shorts. Now I have to say I'm, I'm making uh, a few adjustments. So this was the uh, original pattern that um, I have and the few adjustments are uh, it ends at size 140 so that's about a I don't know 10 10 year old kid size um, the kid I'm making it for is a little bit bigger uh, older and um, so the pattern doesn't fit anyways so I'm taking a different pattern and I'm adjusting it um, to to have these uh, the these corners I'm making shorts that are a little bit longer um, because the kid likes to have slightly longer shorts and I'm also not um, doing um, pockets quite like these are um, I'm doing them slightly different so I'll just share that with you quickly um, so I have um, cut out the uh, the front pieces uh, of the pattern that I have so this is a front piece I'll just sort of lay that down and um, I just measured off, you know, how much um, elastic space I need. So I'm going to be doing five uh, centimeters, two inches worth of elastic. So I need about 10, 10 centimeters, um, approximately five inches up there for the elastic. And then I said, OK, I'm going to cut an opening for my pocket. Um, and on the wrong side, I have actually now it's all black and black. Um, that's a bit unfortunate about this uh, project. Um, but I've put in a the lining for the pocket. I've just cut it in, in regular cotton lycra jersey. Um, and I've pinned it here um, around this uh, this edge. Because this edge I will do with binding. Um, and uh, I've, I've pinned it. And I'm actually going to put some basting stitches into it. Uh, so that the cotton lycra stays, stays put. When I send it through my cover stitch machine with the binder. So I've prepared both of these, both front sides, uh, to do that, and um, that'll sort of be the next step. And you might have noticed me flinging this stuff all around. I haven't cut those corners yet, um, but I will do that in, in the next step. I'll take actually um, the pattern piece from, from this pattern, uh, which is what I was also using for the mock-up. I'll just take the pattern piece and I'll, I'll lay it over, over um, what I have cut and um, then, then cut the corner uh, for, for all four pieces when I get to that point. So I'm going to take this over to my regular sewing machine, do some basting, and, um, and then uh, set up my cover stitch to put on the binding. We'll see you in a bit. Okay, so I've uh, quickly basted my lining, piece of lining, pocket lining onto the front piece uh, for both sides of the uh, shorts. And now I'm going to apply with my binder, still on the single fold uh, paper hack setting, the binding for this uh, pocket opening. Now, one of the things to keep in mind here is that the um, the curves, the inner curves on, on this pocket are relatively tight and um, and I also want to to um, sort of have the binding on this on this uh, pocket edge relatively tight as well so that it doesn't go all wonky when my kid is just randomly stuffing their hands without uh, <laughs> paying too much attention to what they're doing into their pockets, right? So as, as we know, they usually like to do. So I have um, woven my binding in through. Uh, I've removed the pin, so I don't make that mistake again. Um, but I'm actually going to um, purposely put quite a bit of tension on my binding, so it's fully woven through the rake and um, pulling the angle forward a bit, so that um, I keep the tension up and and hopefully get a nice flat form um, and and a, and a nice rounding for my pocket edge. So I'm going to push this through. And take you guys with me on this project. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Since I just freshly threaded my machine, I'm going to take a couple of stitches without anything to get it going, and hopefully that was enough. Now 
as you can see with the inside curves, inner curves, you just kind of need to straighten out your fabric as you go through. Now I'm not going to take this off the machine right away. I'm actually going to do the second pocket um, or pocket edge and uh, and then we'll check it then because I've already cut quite a few strips of black binding so if it doesn't go too well I can just take it out and read it. got something caught up in there. Take it out. And have a look. And since I do, um, have enough binding cut. I'm just gonna. I just cut the two pieces uh, apart from each other, and so let's have a look. So I would say this doesn't look too bad. It looks relatively even. Seems to be nice and tight and 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 firm. So I think you know it has a little bit of stretch left, uh, which will also be good. And let's compare the two. This one also looks pretty good. And even if this is maybe possibly flattened out a bit in, in versus the original curve, when I put the um, front and the back of the pants together on the side seam, I can I can adjust that a little bit so that it, it sort, of, sort of comes back into, uh, into the right spot and um, doesn't look uh, wonky. Now, when I did the um, setup with you guys for the uh, outer curve and, and taught you how I deal with that, I was using contrasting fabrics and threads and all of that great stuff so that we could see everything. This is now black and black um, on my project, but uh, I do check the back side and things look great. The raw edge of my single fold binder is bumping up to the needle threads. So I'm happy. Um, I'm going to put the front pieces aside and um, because I've actually assembled a pair of uh, shorts like this before, I knew that the next step is to do the binding on the bottom edge of the back pieces. So I will go and get that and we can have a look. So here I'm back with a back piece and uh, this will have one outer curve to master on it. Um, and as per the original pattern, I've, I've cut a nick in here um, so that I have an ending spot for, for the binding. Um, this will then sort of disappear when, when constructing the side seams and putting the front uh, on top of it. Um, in the original, because it was a smaller size, they actually recommended doing the binding all in one piece, so down the front, around the leg, and then over to um, this nick here, or vice versa, etc. And um, Because this is a bigger size and I'm just not able to cut a longer strip of binding out of my um, cotton lycra that I have. Uh, I, I'm doing it in two two passes, so the front and the back separately, and I'll do the join um, on the uh, on the inseam. And I've, I've found that um, my kid's not that sensitive, so uh, it seems to not bother them, and these are pretty loose fit anyways, so uh, that's not a problem. So I'm going to put this in. And um, we will be then trying out my method uh, using the sweet spots that I have uh, marked in my learning how video and see if it works. Oh, maybe one other thing, because this is more like a hem and um, not looking for uh, extreme stability, etc. I've actually um, 
put my rake back almost to uh, to straight on to the binder, so there's not a lot of tension. I do have the um, strip woven through the complete rake, but no no additional tension because I don't want this to gather in on the on the bottom edge. Um, and uh, in, and in going around the outer curve, we also don't need that as well. my instructions. I'm now getting to a spot where it's starting to um, go into the curve and I'm going to release the screws a little bit just gently and do my first shift over approximately halfway of what I've originally marked to get started. Now I'm about halfway through my curve Releasing my screws again, going over to my full sweet spot, tightening them up, and doing the rest of the curve. And now I'm getting back to a spot where I'm coming out of my curve. So I'm going to go back, shift my binder back a little bit. Take a couple more stitches and then shift it back fully to the original sweet spot where I would be do doing normal straight binding. And here, now I'm going to flip over this portion right there and I'm going to continue until I get past this uh, clipping that I did. And you can see there I'm past, so I'm going to uh, take this out of the machine so we can have a look. Okay, so that doesn't look too clean right here on this uh, clip mark. Um, but I think because of the fact that it, it gets um, put then into construction, I should be okay. And uh, let's have a look at the rest of the results. Unfortunately, as I said, black and black is a little bit hard to look at. Um, but I'll hold it, try and hold it really still so it focuses. Um, and I would like to say that this is really pretty even results around the curve. Um, it's also, you know, lying relatively flat, so it's not like... I mean, if I do ask it to, it's, it will curl up, um, but it's not trying to dramatically curl up. So this looks pretty good. This clip mark here stuff I think I can deal with when I'm constructing. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off here. I'm going to leave a little tail on still uh, just to make sure I have some stuff to, to uh, work with when I'm um, putting together the garment. So I'd say that looks pretty good. And I'm going to go off and do the second uh, second half. Okay, so uh, in the meantime, one of the things I did was I attached uh, the green fabric to the lining of my pocket um, just by surging around the outer edge. And this is one of the reasons why I just love this kind of inseam pockets uh, done this way. Because this is really quick and it's easy and you don't have to do 15 million steps and maybe back tack and all that stuff. Um, and I, I have then basted uh, the legs of the pocket along the side seam the, into place. Um, and you'll notice I haven't cut off the um, the tabs of my binding yet. I really like to leave those on until the last minute because they just give you something to hang on to if you need to pull, push or shove something into spot. Um, it's just great to have them on. Now, because we're not going to be surging the side seam as one would normally do in construction, um, but we're actually going to be binding um, the side seam in a uh, huge one pass operation. Um, now is the time where I'm gonna go and clean things up because with a serger, um, yeah, okay, I would cut the binding 
first, but you know, these, these kinds of things where I've got a little bit of overhang and all of that stuff. Um, I need to clean that up uh, now before I try and stuff it through the binder. Um, I'm also just for the sake of not wearing out my machine too much, I'm going to um, do a couple of whacks with the hammer on, on, on this binding piece because this also has to go through my binder, right? So this whole thing, um, and in the, in the case of the pockets, um, I'm gonna have a front layer, a back layer, I'm gonna have two layers from the pocket, I'm gonna have the binding from the pocket edge, and I'm gonna act, have the actual binding of, of the um, side seam. So there's gonna be quite a few layers when I'm going through here, so I just you know, wanna try and, and reduce as much bulk as possible. So my next step is clean up here on the pocket side, uh, on, on the side seam of the pockets, so that I can send it through my binder nicely. Um, do a couple wax with the hammer uh, on the bulky spots, and then I should be set. One other thing to keep in mind um, when doing these kinds of pockets uh, is, is the lineup. So uh, you can see that um, hopefully on the camera. One of the things I did before doing the basting was, was check and see, you know, are these pocket openings pretty much still at the same height and, and the same length? Okay, a couple, couple millimeters um, aren't gonna show from the road, uh, but am I like, you know, dramatically off like this? No, right? So, you know, I, I went in and I, I checked before doing the basting um, to make sure that I'm more or less in the right spot and uh, I'm not going to have some lopsided stuff coming out when I'm done. So I'm going to go clean it up and uh, we'll come back and try and put this through the binder. So I'm getting ready to do the side seam binding on, on these pants and I wanted to show you how I've prepared for this and um, tell you about what I've done. So. Um, I took it over to my cutting table to be able to lay it out nice and, and flat and, and you know match some things up. So one of the things I really wanted to have match up was this uh, outer curve down at the bottom um, so that when when we open up the pants that you know the lower edge of the um, pants are going to be at the same height and, and not look wonky there. So that was one of the first points I was looking at and then of course I, I lined up the upper spot and um, I was I was actually pinning both halves at the same time so I also double triple checked and make sure that my pocket openings were more or less still at the same spot and then I just pinned it a couple of times um, what I also did is I took um, my glue stick which is uh, water soluble glue and I, I used it on a couple of um, important spots one of them is down here at the bottom where I have this uh, little cut out um, when we did the back half. And um, because I really, really don't want this spot to shift when, when I'm doing the binding. So I put a dab of glue underneath that and I've glued it together, um, just a dab, okay? And then here um, where the binding of the pockets um, are gonna go under, I also put a dab of glue, so you can see that it's not coming apart on its own, um, under each of those spots so that it, you know, when I'm, trying to get it to go through the machine and I maybe have to push or guide, guide is the right word, right? Uh, a little bit more um, that it's not gonna shift because I'm gonna have to take the pins out. Um, they're just, you know, here to help me, but you have to take them out always in due time. Um, and so I won't have really something to help me. You can also put in pins on, on this side with the head on the inside of the um, garment facing towards the binding where you could leave those in, right? They wouldn't be getting in the way and you'd make sure that the, the um, tip of the pin is you know, ending before we, you're gonna go through in the binding. I've also taken my trusted um, rubber mallet and um, given the area section of bulk, so here specifically with the binding and also here down um, around where the rest of the pocket is, a couple of nice um, solid wax, not too heavy and not too hard because um, you don't want to break the fibers, but um, that just helps compress things down a bit and um, just helps you get through the machine a bit better. Additionally, um, I have gone in and I've changed the needles on my machine. Um, I usually use a size 80 needles, but for this, uh, this um, job, I'm going to be using 90, size 90 needles, because I just have so much bulk here, and I really want to make sure I don't get skip stitches, because that would be annoying. 
So the last thing that I'm going to do in preparation is I'm going to pin, fold back and pin this section because this really needs to be out of the way and when I'm um, going through the binder and whatever I don't want to have to think about it. So I'm going to pin this back just nicely, just really out of the way, grabbing a couple pins here so that when I'm going through my binder I don't have to worry about by accident catching this. Okay. Now, the last thing to keep in mind is um, on which side am I going to be doing my binding. And with this project, I'm always doing my binding on the front side. So I want the right side of my binding, the nice side of my binding, on the front piece of my garment. So that means I'm going to be binding from the inseam around my outer corner up to the waist. Whereas on the other side of my project, I would be starting at the waist and going down and around. Um, so that just, just to make sure that you um, don't by accident bind in the wrong direction um, and uh, and then have to take it out and um, redo it. Believe me, I've done it. <laughs> I wasn't too happy. And then we're always grateful that um, you can take things out of the cover stitch machine really quickly. So I've share with you how I've prepared this. Um, another thing, before I forget it, I have a lot of binding, a massive strip of binding. It got dust on it somewhere. I don't know how that happened. Um, can't imagine. Uh, but I have a really long piece of binding so that I don't run out. This is something I don't want to play binding chicken on. Um, I just really like to do it in one pass and concentrate on 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 my outer curve that I that I'm trying to master and not worry about running out of binding just over the uh, pocket. So I'll go get my machine set up and we'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my machine set up. I put in um, put my strip of binding through the binder. Um, got it through the entire rake, but I'm pretty much straight, so I'm not generating a lot of tension. Like I said, I have a huge pool of um, of my binding strip. Um, I changed the needles to be size 90 so that um, you know I know that or I have a bit more trust and faith that it's going to deal with the bulk. So let's give it a go. To where the curve starts um, and that means I'm going to loosen my screws just slightly and move over halfway between my original sweet spot and what I had um, determined as the the right spot uh, during the practice goes and we'll continue on around a little bit getting more into the curve so we're going to move over a little bit more pretty much to uh, what we determined as the sweet spot for uh, this outer curve. And here I'm going to be flipping the bulk from the back side of the uh, pants out of the way so that it's not causing drag. That's one of the things that can also happen is that your project by accident causes drag. And now we're back on um, pretty much to uh, where we're going to be straight. So I'm going to release the screws, move back, move back halfway, take a couple more stitches, and move back fully to my standard sweet spot of where I can generate great results on straight or inner curves. Now, I need to make sure this guy stays out of my way. That's the bottom part, and we can see here that I'm making a huge mess out of things. Try and get uh, get going a little bit more. Okay, and I'm going to start taking my pins out. Now we're about to go over the first spot where I put in some glue, uh, which was to hold that. Um, the 
back side in the right spot so that it doesn't shift once I've taken the pins out, which would be kind of annoying and would then make, you know, cause uneven results. See, we're getting up to where we've basted uh, the pockets down to the front section, um, and that means we're going to start getting into a little bit of more of the bulk. Going to want to make sure you feed this all in and one thing I'm seeing is that my um, my machine the needles are getting quite close uh, to the edge of my binding uh, so I'm just going to move it over to the left a little bit and I can tell it's struggling slightly with the um, amount of the bulk I could hear that probably going over it um, but it still went through pretty well, so I'm hoping everything's okay. And now that we're over these bulk sections, uh, I am going to move back to the sweet spot. Sorry about that. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to take this off of my machine and uh, we'll have a look in a second. Okay, so let's have a look at um, what I've done. So this is uh, what I just got off of my machine. So of course the first, uh, the first check is um, here around the outer curve. Uh, you know, did, did I get it uh, relatively lined up? And it looks like I did. Also on the back side, even though it's hard to tell black on black. On black. The second spot to have a look at is where we have that little clipping, where we have the front and the back section coming together. And um, this is where I had said that it's not that big of a deal when um, if, if this clip is, you know, sort of a little bit open or whatever, because this is going to um, get positioned properly and, and, and then you'll do a, uh, a bar tack over that and, and it'll hold everything together. Okay, so that's not that big of a deal. Then we go up. Um, over the binding, so here you see that, um, or maybe you can, I'm not sure, I can, um, that the left needle got pretty close to the um, to the edge. And that's where I decided oh, it's about time to um, actually push over a little bit. And, and you see that, um, I think I, I started to, um, I moved the binder a little bit about here, but it always takes a little bit before the, the binder adjusts. So you kind of have a little bit of wave in there um, and then and then things get a little bit back to normal in between the two um, pocket binding pieces and then um, it, you can see it struggles still a little bit here um, but in general I would say you know for um, a pair of gym pants uh, for a kid um, I'm not going to complain these are things that you know you <laughs> as I said in my um, setting that all of this stuff up you won't be able to see it from the road so the next couple of steps are um, pretty simple so I'm gonna iron iron everything out so that it's um, so that it lays flat uh, down the down the side seam I'm going to take my cover stitch with one needle chain and I'm actually going to sort of artificially put in the third row 
So it looks like you have a third row and that's how this binding is gonna then stay flat on the side seam. Then once I've done that, or maybe before, I'm not sure, I'll have a look down here at the bottom. Uh, probably actually before I do uh, do that, that third row, I'll have a look down here at the bottom, put everything all in place. You probably use my glue stick and a couple of uh, good spots to make sure that things don't uh, adjust around and, uh, and put in a bar tack. And once I've done those things, I will um, show you what it looks like. And uh, then we're actually pretty much ready to do the, um, the front, uh, front and back crotch seams and, uh, and the inseam. Quick and simple. See you in a bit. Okay, so I have... Um, I've ironed up my pieces on the side seam, so basically laid them flat from the wrong side and, and uh, pressed, pressed this uh, nice and flat. And what I've also done is taken my trusty children's glue stick, it's washable so it, it'll wash out, um, and, and I've glued up this section a little bit um, just to, to hold it down um, without pins. Used a used a clip uh, in between just to just to keep it where it's supposed to be while it's drying, and then on the back side I've also um, glued down a bit this this tab here um, because when when we finish the product I'd, I I want to make sure that uh, it's it's not flap flopping around too much and um, kind of irritating uh, the um, person who's wearing it so. Ironed and, and did those two um, spots of glue, so basically where, where the binding overlaps uh, here on the bottom of the out, outer seam. And then the next step that I did was to um, do the, the bar tack, and I've already done it on the, um, on the other leg, and so let me, let me show you what that looks like. So basically down here, sort of where, where the two uh, separate from each other. I've I've put in a bar tack, and let me uh, bring that right up close so that you can see that. And this is basically going to you know hold this his, this together. Um, and and you can't see it from the road, so that's kind of nice. The other thing that I did with my uh, normal sewing machine. So I did that bar tack with the normal sewing machine. Um, and the other thing I did with my normal sewing machine, and you theoretically shouldn't be able to see it too much, is I went down the uh, the left needle and basically sewed down the under layer of the binding where it crosses over and where I mentioned on the other piece that you kind of have that little flap. So I just lined myself right up with those original stitches from when I did the binding and went over it again. Let me try and get you right up close and you'll kind of see that it's a bit of a, a double layer there. And that basically Looking at it on the back side, I'm trying to get that black on black so that you can see it, um, tacks down this section, right? So you'll you'll have a little bit of flap, and if this is really irritating the wearer, you can you can cut it off basically. Um, and uh, and here's where you see a little bit of the of the nick. Now, if I'd planned this maybe a little bit better, probably I could have gotten it so that um, you know this 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 section this this what's still you know flapping around was a bit a bit closer to to the other binding so sort of sort of turning up a little bit more um, but I think this is acceptable for what I'm doing as a, as a hobby and uh, it shouldn't be too bothersome and like I said if it is you can you can actually just cut it off it's all it, this is knit and jersey and it, it's not gonna un unravel so you could probably cut this a bit closer to to your stitching Okay, so I did the bar tack and, and, I, and I sewed that piece down um, before going over and, and putting in the, the third row of stitches so that I don't have to, you know, compete too much with, uh, with all this stuff down at the bottom and worry about it slipping, etc. I used the glue, uh, you see a little bit of residual glue there, um, used the glue stick to, to keep it in place while I was doing those uh, things. So now, uh, 
pretty much all that I have left for this side seam is to send it through my cover stitch again to um, put in the third row of stitches to uh, to keep this side seam basically flat and, and, and not flopping up. So I'm going to put this into my machine and uh, and then show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've got this uh, now lined up in my machine and I've made a conscious decision to sew top to bottom. Um, the reason for that is because when you when you take a project out of the machine you automatically are locking the stitches and I just want to have that additional security at the bottom so when I'm when I'm finishing up down here basically uh, at my bar tack uh, which I have right here I want to be have, really know and be sure that my stitches are secure now you can argue that when you start at the top or that when you start your stitches they're also secure um, I know some people depending on the machine sometimes have the experience that the first couple of stitches don't always hold etc and you sometimes use a leader piece to make sure that when you get onto your project there are the stitches hold etc so I'm trying to prevent all of that all those additional challenges by starting at the top and because I've also left um, the binding on so I didn't I didn't cut off the tag of, of my original binding that basically means I already have an automatic leader piece which I can then cut uh, once I've I've made it through what I've also done uh, and this is um, why I'm using my right far right needle is I'm lining up the two original rows of binding stitching with the um, with the needle tick marks on my foot, right? So that I, I hopefully can can line up uh, pretty well without it going wonky on me while going down the binder strip. So that's one of the things that I'm that I'm also concentrating on is keeping my my rows of needle stitching that's already there lined up with the ticks marks. Additionally, in preparation, I, uh, I did give the bulky sections a couple of wax with the hammer just to um, hopefully make them a little bit easier. Uh, now, of course, we all know that this machine is a workhorse, etc. But making things as easy as possible, I think, is um, always kind of nice to do and helps you just get better results. So I'm going to take this down for the tour of the uh, outer side seam. And we'll see you on the other side. Okay, let me turn off the machine and push it back a bit and uh, and we can have a look at uh, what happened. So 
In a couple spots, I, I actively chose to not necessarily follow uh, the um, the needle stitches that were there because I knew they had kind of wandered off a bit, uh, unfortunately due to the bulk of, of going over the uh, binding that was previously there. So I kind of tried to make it straight. Um, you'll see that it kind of wonks around, or you might not see it, kind of wonks around a little bit. Um, but I'm going to live with that. I think uh, looking at it and, and judging it, I could have actually made a decision to line up on the outer edge that might have uh, given possibly nicer results. That's an option that you might consider as well. So not necessarily lining up your third row of needles and, and the needle ticks um, with the with the original stitching, but actually using the uh, the outer edge as a as a guide. And I might try that on the uh, on the other leg that I still need to do because that might actually look better than than what it is here. Um, realistically, though, I'm as a sewist, we're probably the only ones who will notice that. And if the kids got these pants on in gym class, nobody's going to see it. And here you can hopefully see at the um, very end. I ended my stitches at the bar tack and um, the needle thread is of course secured to the back which will I then will um, pull in and uh, and, and secure the, uh, the tabs in a bit. So that's the side seam. Uh, I'm going to do up the other one and then we're pretty much ready for the rest of the uh, construction seams. So I've um, searched up the crotch and inseams and let me show you what the uh, results look like. I used a method um, where, uh, so I did the um, the inseams first and then I did the crotch seam. And for the inseam I used a method uh, which I'm not going to show you because I don't want to take uh, claim to the fame but I will post the link for it. Um, I sew from the binding side, so that's where I start at the spot where it was bound um, and uh, then then up basically in this case up the uh, inseam um, I used a bit of glue to uh, to position the uh, the binding strips to another so that the and they more or less meet up and once I'm done that the only thing left to do then is to decide whether it, I want the the this little tabby thing to um, fold to the back or to the front and um, for the time being, while I'm still finishing my project and before I tack this down with my uh, regular sewing machine, I'll just put a clip on it so it um, starts remembering where it needs to go. And uh, and then pretty much is one of the last steps. I'll uh, whack it a couple times with a hammer to flatten it out and then um, uh, tack it down with my regular sewing machine. So I did the inseams first and then I did the crotch seam in, in one swoop and one thing I like to do um, when I have seam intersections is, and I hope you can see that on the black and black, really unfortunate color here, is um, I, I do flip my, my seams so the, when I'm, if I'm surging from here from top to bottom uh, the upper seam that I can see that's going to go under my foot uh, I have facing the foot and the lower seam that I don't see will be uh, going through the um, transporting feet and, and so they're crossed like that. Now the advantage of that is when my presser foot gets to this bit of bulk it's going to push on it a little bit and it, it actually it shoves it into the fold of the lower seam and that helps get, um, where is it, Let's see it on the right side, um, a nice intersection, right? So if, you, if you've got these two folds kind of, you know, pushing, pushing into each other, um, you, you can actually get this uh, intersection really pretty, pretty tight. Okay, so that, that's something that I consciously do. I don't only do this on the crotch seams, but like on, on your um, arms when you're sewing up the side seams of a t-shirt, I'll also do the same thing. So I'll have the, you know, sort of a in, a, in an X and, and then um, they push in and nest in really nicely. So the only thing left uh, for me to do is the elastic around the top. And um, I actually need to put together 
two bands of elastic. Um, the kid likes a, a wider elastic and I only have one inch or, or two and a half centimeter wide elastic so I need to put those two together so I have a two inch or five centimeter and that's going to fold down and then I'll be uh, top stitching that with my cover stitch machine uh, evenly and actually that's one of the reasons why I um, was really motivated to get the machine um, because of the wide bed and, and this will really make it easier uh, with this five centimeter um, two inch uh, top elastic to uh, to feed that through and last time I did it with my previous machine I was kind of breaking my fingers so that's pretty much all I have left to do um, here you know and now I can cut off the uh, nips of uh, or the, the tails off my binding and um, complete it all up remember to uh, Put a label in the back while I'm constructing that, and um, we should be pretty done pretty soon. One last thing, uh, I just remembered. So when I was doing the side seams, I mentioned. Let me see which one did I do first. So I did the one with the longer tail first. On, the, on this one, I was matching or trying to line up the needle ticks of my foot, my presser foot, to the original stitches, and I, I did mention that it kind of felt like my my. Um, top stitching could be a little bit closer to the edge of the fold and that maybe um, what I did wasn't actually the the best of ideas so on the other side uh, what I did was I ended up using the um, middle needle position and I lined up the left needle tick of my foot a little bit more to the outer edge um, and kind of I mean de depends on where you look uh, the results were slightly better so I think that's something you need to play with one thing when when playing with the needle positions and and going down on this third row to keep in mind is that you're utilizing your feed dogs and the differential to its utmost so um, you know you that you have as as much um, under the foot and on your feed dogs as possible and that you're not kind of stitching on the edge of, of your foot on the edge of the binding with the majority of your foot sort of hanging in the air those kinds of things are really important to uh, keep in mind that um, you'll it'll help you get uh, more even results so I'm gonna go up and deal with the elastic and uh, I think I need to measure the kid again make sure that it's uh, gonna fit before she has gym class this week and um, I'll uh, show you in between what it looks like. So before I move over to uh, top stitching the elastic onto, um, actually not onto, but doing the final top stitching for the elastic, I want to share with you what I did. So I mentioned that um, I only had one inch wide and I was going to put that together. So basically I just used a, a simple zigzag um, butting up the two lengths of, of my uh, elastic. Um, so simple zigzag with the regular sewing machine and um, and then after measuring the kit making sure that it'll fit um, I joined them uh, with a basically a flat join uh, which hopefully you can see here um, I have one side going over overlapping approximately uh, by an inch or each side overlapping by approximately an inch and I used a relatively um, short and narrow zigzag stitch uh, along the edge but completely on uh, the um, upper slash lower layer of uh, elastic and I found that gives a really nice flat join um, has enough stability to hold up as you as you can see it doesn't really doesn't budge much but it budge, budges enough um, and uh, and that's how I did that of course with contrast thread so that you could see it then um, I uh, carefully measured it out in, in fourths, I think, and um, attached uh, with my regular serger um, the uh, the elastic to the top of the um, of the shorts. And now, uh, and I've I've put my <laughs> my tag for the back here. I've just I've just uh, clipped it on as a reminder because I'm really good at forgetting that, and I get complaints from. Uh, Complaints from the kids if there's no tag in the back, they are very attached to that. So now what I'm going to do um, before I uh, get ready to top stitch 
or in getting ready to top stitch, I'm just going to fold this over and um, pin it um, down at the at the lower edge. Um, and I'm actually only going to do that on the um, on the seams. Okay, so um, with the in in anticipation or with the expectation that while I'm top stitching it, I'm going to be stretching it out just enough so that the elastic is stretched, but I'm not trying not to uh, stretch the fabric as well. And so I'm going to be stretching this uh, out in the machine as I'm top stitching and um, and just using those uh, four pins on the on the uh, four seams to uh, to keep my stuff lined up. So that's the plan. Uh, I'm going to fold this over and uh, and pin it and um, of course make sure uh, this little guy, my little tag here, um, is uh, basically then also tucked in here so that it uh, when I when I do do the top stitching in the uh, last round, uh, it, I will top stitch that in. I am anticipating on this project to do two rounds of top stitching, so one basically in the middle and one on the uh, lower edge. Because I have a five centimeter, um, two inch width of elastic, I'm obvious, well, I'm not, maybe not obviously, but I'm not gonna top stitch exactly in the middle and exactly at five centimeters. I'm gonna basically assume that I only have four and a half centimeters or just under two inches of width, divide that by two so that I figure out where the middle space of that is, and that's going to allow me to have an evenly spaced top stitch on, on of course, on the outer, on the outside, um, evenly spaced, and ensuring that when I do the um, the round of top stitching on the edge or close to the edge, that I actually am always catching the edge and don't don't go awry and and miss something there because that would be unfortunate and would leave potentially, let's say, uneven results. So I'm going to also use a bit of little, a little bit of uh, my glue stick, glue from my glue stick to put this in and make sure it stays in place when I um, am going around and, um, and then pin up my four edges and uh, we'll see you on the cover stitch. Okay, so I have my um, machine all threaded up and in anticipation of basically doing something that's like a hem, um, I've brought out my uh, stolen pieces of Lego from the kids. <laughs> um, they what they don't know won't hurt them, right? Uh, and and basically measured out from my from the needle that I'm using uh, to the edge of the Lego half of my desired width. Uh, I said I have um, approximately five centimeters of elastic, which means I want to have my second row of stitches at about four and a half centimeters in, so I make sure that I catch everything. So doing the simple math, that means this Lego is now placed at 2.25 um, centimeters, so um, just over the two centimeters, but not quite at the two and a half. So um, I'm not sewing exactly in the middle of my elastic, and uh, and that will also allow me to evenly space the uh, two rows of top stitching without, like I said, falling off the edge, which is something that I wanted to watch out for. Um, I've also, as I said, placed, um, put in the uh, the needles, basically just just doing the um, four seams uh, for needles, and um, and of course I've glued in my uh, my tag so that I don't forget that uh, I'm going to take the clip off now so that it's not in the way while sewing. Now, when I do put my project in the machine. Uh, as I said, I'm gonna have to be stretching it as I go. And one thing I really like to pay attention to is when, where is my starting point? So here I'm going to um, make sure that I'm starting in the back, because um, I like to have <laughs> um, the matching up of the starting and ending stitches uh, in the back, um, just as a matter of preference. And checking to make sure I got that right. And the other thing I watch out for when I'm starting is that um, I don't have the foot under anything that's uneven, okay? So here, here's my seam, and uh, I'm, I'm not gonna start right on this seam, because if you, when you put your project under that and you put your foot down, you'll already see 
maybe not on the video, but on your machine, that your foot's at a slant, which also means that your machine has extra work to do. The dog, feet dogs and the differential will have more challenges and you're more likely to have issues getting your stitching started if you start um, with, your, with your foot at an uneven um, spot. So what I'm gonna, where am, am I gonna start? I am indeed starting in the back, but I'm gonna start so that my foot is completely past this, the bulk of the uh, of the back middle seam, and um, and that will also, when I'm finishing the top stitching, also make it easier for the machine as a good spot to finish. So I'm gonna pull that in. I'm also sort of working on on getting the. Um, the fabric in my project evenly uh, evenly stretched and trying not to uh, knock the camera out of here and um, I'm basically just going to look for a nice spot get my foot down and just get a needle in the machine in the project so that things aren't going to move out around as much anymore now once I get going one of the things I got I really need to watch out for is that I'm not overstretching the fabric. So basically just stretching only stretching out to where the elastic is is um, making the uh, the fabric taut, but not overstretching because this fabric is actually a bit on the stretchy side. If you do do that, um, basically you can you can get uneven gathering um, and maybe the results don't look as nice. The other thing to watch out for is that the top edge um, is uh, is doesn't have any air in it, so that when I, I'm keeping it nice and smooth and flat, and uh, there's not like um, and it's folding over exactly on the edge of the elastic. So with that said, I'm gonna hold on to the fabric down here underneath the camera where you can't see my hand, and uh, and get started. Um, not too much left to say, and we'll see how it goes. As you see, I've got a little bit of challenge here. Uh, not too sure why. Probably it looks. I'm looking at the back side. Looks like a little bit of misalignment between the, the upper and lower section. Um, I'm just going to carefully take out the needle, and uh, and hopefully it'll it'll smooth out. Um, if I don't like the final results, the nice thing about using um, the cover stitch for the top stitching is you can you can undo it, unravel it really quickly. So we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. So make sure I get myself lined up again for the next quarter of, uh, of the stitching. As you can see this is a bit tricky um, especially when I've got the camera on for you guys and uh, probably the first pass on this um, when I get it out of the machine will not look so nice and I'll redo it but let's have a look You know what? I'm actually going to stop here. I'm going <laughs> to, I mean, and I'm not going to give you guys a, a censored version. You see a lot of things going on here. Okay. One of the things is that um, 
basically through the the way I'm, I'm managing this and the way I'm doing it you've got the um, the top layer of my fabric is pushing forward and you see these ripples here um, and the fact that it's continuously pushing my fabric forward um, that is is really um, if you can see it can't quite see it in the back um, but that's going to give me a, a result that I'm just not going to be happy with okay so because I'm already seeing that in and uh, and I'm not even halfway through uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just actually going to um, not I'm going to turn my needle uh, turn my um, pull my needle back up out of the fabric which and not can finish the stitch but going basically going in uh, in reverse so that um, when I open up the um, presser foot and I take my uh, project out of the uh, machine the stitches are not locked let me just cut the needle thread over here on the side carefully pull it out because I don't want it unraveling immediately and pull it out of the machine so I've not locked my stitch and I just really want to show you guys um, what I'm not happy about and why I'm sort of stopping here and and willing to uh, to redo it so basically what happened is and it, it was through going over this uh, very bulky side seam right so the side seams are very bulky and in the beginning a little bit as well but what you see is that the um, the gathering of the of the fabric is is um, slightly slanted right and although you know when it when it stretches out yeah it'll be more or less okay um, but for my personal taste it's it's not i'm when i'm finished i'm not going to be satisfied okay so without locking the stitches um i i took the project out of the machine which basically means that i can just um gently uh pull on my threads because they're not locked gently pull on them and uh, everything comes undone that's the delight of uh, using the cover stitch machine and um, I'm gonna have a second look about what happened and and uh, what went on so I think one of the things was that I didn't I didn't do a really nice job of um, pinning up and lining up the uh, the side seam here so what I'm gonna do to to change that actually uh, is I'm going to put two pins in so I only had one and I had it on the on the um, front side of, of the seam so I'm going to put in two that's one thing to get that really uh, stabilized and I think the second one that I'm going to put in is actually going to be up here uh, where I'm stitching because I've been I've been putting my pins down at the yeah, basically at the bottom edge but I'm going to put my second pin uh, up here where I'm going to be stitching and I think in looking at it all and, and the fact that I am fighting a bit with the, with having the camera in the way, I'm going to go in and I'm going to put in um, an extra set of pins for in the uh, basically in the eighth, right? So that I um, I get I get things distributed uh, using the pins a little bit better, and um, that should probably work better. Okay, so I'm going to um, go grab some pins and pin it all up, and we'll see you shortly. Okay, so I've got my pins in, and you see that, as I said, I decided to put in the um, pins at the eighth position. Now, I didn't make a science out of it. I just went in and, and kind of, you know, stretched it out and, and eyeballed it. Um, that's going to be more or less good enough. And as I said, I, on the uh, side seams, I put in an extra pin um, also at the height of, of where I'm going to be stitching in the hope that that'll uh, help keep things a little bit more even. I'm going to stuff this back in the machine, making sure that I'm starting, well, not making sure that I'm starting in the same spot, but with the same idea of uh, having my foot, my presser foot level uh, on in the project or on the project and also starting um, in the back because that's where I like to meet up uh, the stitches. Just getting that in there lined up to my Legos and by the way I forgot to mention that earlier um, that's my little so-called Lego hack um, they are attached to the bed of the machine with just a little bit of this uh, sort of 
sticky putty, um, often called, uh, let's say, in the US market, uh, blue tack. Uh, here it's not blue, but white, and called something else, but that's um, usually what you can get it. Uh, so, foot down, needle in the project. Um, I'll try to keep the camera uh, on position. As I said, stretching out only so that I'm stretching the elastic, but not overstretching the fabric. And we'll give this another go. So here you can maybe you can't see it on the uh, on the um, video, but here um, it's it's actually really pushing against the um, the binding, and this is the uh, side seam where I didn't have the stitches as close to the edge as, as the other one. Um, that's a bit unfortunate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hand crank uh, the needle one more stitch, take out my poor little pin. Um, and then I'm going to very, very carefully uh, lift up the presser foot a little bit. And I'm not going to do it here because this is a plastic foot. I'm not just going to use my thumb because it's a plastic foot and, and uh, there's rumors that those can break. Um, but I'm just going to very, very carefully release a bit on the tension uh, with, the, with the presser foot. And hopefully uh, that smoothed it out. I'm going to go one more stitch. Yeah, it looks like it fold it back down or relax down a little bit. So I'm just going to give that a go. And as you can see, um, my machine also struggles a bit over the bulk here. No big deal. Just keep on going. Also trying really hard to keep butted up against the Legos. And um, as you can, maybe can or cannot see, um, with the extra pins in the project, I've been able to uh, not generate those diagonal ripples, which uh, I didn't want to have. So hoping that this will go well. drag this around a little, no, I can't drag it around a little bit. I'm going to um, actually turn off the camera right now, get it out of the way so that I'm not knocking it over and, and pushing it around all the time while I'm sewing through this, and I'll show you the results uh, at the end. Okay, as promised, um, I will come back to you and show you what the results look like. So one of the things I was looking for was to have the gathering um, basically always um what is that going to be vertical um so not not diagonal um got a little bit of diagonal in here but um if you look at all the gathers the majority of them are are pretty um vertical to the uh to the edge and that's a look that i want to have um i just find that that it looks um much nicer than if you've got things going diagonally. Also, another thing I was looking for, and sometimes it didn't work out quite so well, um, was the evenness of the seam to uh, to the edge. You see here that it, we have always kind of struggle a little bit when we're going over the binding, um, but basically that there's no air and, and you can't, maybe you can tell, but here I'm really pushing against the edge of the elastic and there's no, no extra fabric uh, up above. Um, also, as I said, you know, for starting and ending the seam, no, the top stitching, it's not a seam, top stitching, 
on a section where the foot will be flat. So I overlap. So this is the um, this is the beginning threads and the ending threads. If you can see them down here, um, actually you can see it on the back side rather nicely. Um, you know, inch and a half basically apart. So I overlapped the top stitching by about an inch and a half just to make sure that the starting threads were um, were uh, secured. I'll pull this one to the back and I'll thread everything in, uh, in loop things through here um, just to make sure everything's all, all down nicely. Now I started with the first row of stitches. Um, there's a reason I do that because one of the things I found is that if you start with the um, let's say with the uh, the wider set of stitches sometimes the the one that they, then you put in, in the middle will actually end up um, gathering in a different way uh, than than the original stitches so I, I prefer to do it this way because then I can basically just stretch to what I've already done and um, I find that those results tend to come out better so what do I need to do now? I need to do my second row of stitches. I'm going to once again start in the in the back, um, pretty much at the same spot, and um, I'm going to be placing my Lego at four and a half centimeters, so just shy of the uh, five centimeters for for the edge. Let me check on that actually here. So we've got five centimeters to uh, to the edge of the elastic, and if I'm sewing at four and a half, that means that I'm going to be well on well on the edge but not too far in um, but I'm always with that I'll always make sure that I'm catching uh, catching the edge of my um, waistband so I need to readjust my Legos for that uh, I've left these pins in um, I'm going to while I'm readjusting the Legos I'll pro I'm going to put in um, the pins down here as well for the eighths. So I'm going to section this off in eighths and uh, hopefully that'll help me a bit. And um, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I'm back and all ready to do the second row of stitches. So um, once again, I, I went in and I pinned the eighths uh, just for helping me out. Especially when I've got the camera running, I've placed the um, the Legos now back to uh, four and a half centimeters. Always making sure that you're measuring uh, against the needle. Let me get this thing the right way around. Exactly. So, um, basically four and a half uh, to the needle tick, which is the center needle that I'm using, and I am once again going to be starting um, pretty much at the same location uh, in the back with the foot even on on the project so not um, bothered by the uh, back seam. I'm going to try when I'm putting the foot down also try to um, have things stretched and kind of aligned to um, what the project was like already with the original stitching so that uh, we don't get things um, diagonal and the gathering between the upper section and the lower section stays the same. So foot down and needle in the project. And then of course now, um, obviously my focus is on stretching and making sure that this all kind of still stays flat and aligned. And we'll give it a whirl, see how it goes. So here, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that was one of the selling points of this machine with the with the throat space. As you can see, I can just nicely put my hand through there. Um, the previous model of uh, of this company had a very small throat space, um, and as you can imagine, if I'm doing something with like this uh, five centimeters, uh, two inch wide uh, elastic, um, I was really uh, struggling with that and cursing a couple of times. <laughs> which we're not supposed to do, we're supposed to be enjoying this, right? So, here we go. Now, coming up to the uh, nemesis of the side seam. Now, what I've done is I've got my needle in the, uh, in the project, 
managed to stop at the right spot and you can see this just looks totally wonky so what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully 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 lift up my presser foot not fully so I'm just lifting it up a little bit also so that the uh, thread tension discs don't fully disengage and uh, straighten that out a little bit so that um, hopefully it will go through a bit nicer. the way. You've seen about half of this. Um, I'm once again going to put the uh, camera on the side and uh, finish it up and show you what the results look like. Okay, so I made it all the way around the second time and I just wanted to show you the results. So again, starting in the back, um, one of the things I was looking for, right, was having the um, starting and ending point uh, of my top stitching in a level section. So that's what I've done here. Um, my other goal was making sure that all of my uh, gathering was uh, horizontal um, and I would say on the back side uh, that looks pretty successful. Um, let me stretch it out and let it go back in. Um, all pretty horizontal and the, um, the spacing between the uh, top stitching looks more or less even and if we look at it from the front side um, pretty much even as well here. I've got a little jog in there. That's um, actually right on top of the uh, the center front seam. Um, fortunately, I think the kid wears her shirt over her shorts. Uh, so at the end of the day, nobody's going to see it. So more or less even, more or less um, the gathers, more or less straight here, slightly horse, uh, slightly um, off, but uh, nothing nothing dramatic. And between the upper and the lower section, um, the gathering is is relatively even and similar, so it's not like uh, working against each other or um, looking totally uh, unusual. So that was it. Uh, maybe oh, just from the inside, right? So I've got my tag in there. Managed to secure secure that with the second row of top stitching. Let's see. At least I hope. I assume it's just not the glue. Yeah, it's in there. Um, and as as I mentioned, right, my goal was to have the uh, top stitching sort of in from the edge a little bit, making sure that I don't miss anything. Um, you see sometimes a little bit uneven, um, but overall if we go through, go around it all once, uh, which we just did, um, manage to catch everything and uh, so there's nothing uh, out and in the loose. So if I'm not mistaken, that was it. The shorts are done, everything's tacked down, Yep, these guys got tacked down, bar tacks done. So this is the um, result of doing the uh, sort of retro look uh, gym shorts with the binding going on an, an outer curve, which is uh, a bit of a challenge. Um, and uh, I think overall uh, giving us um, some nice results. Have to take care of those threads in a bit and uh, let me just give you a final look down sort of the uh, down sort of the side seam with the uh, pocket also done with binding uh, and jersey on the inside and put my hand behind that looks pretty nice so thanks for watching I know it was long project is long takes a bit of time to uh, to do all those things. Sometimes there's mistakes and we have to take them out. I hope you enjoyed it um, and maybe enjoy some of my other videos and look forward to seeing you again in Rebecca's Swing Corner.